in the book of Ezekiel chapter 37. I'll start in verse 10 again and read down to verse 14. The book of Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 10. So I prophesied as he commanded me and breath came into them and they lived and stood upon their feet an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They indeed say our bones are dry, our hope is lost, and we ourselves are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up from your graves. I will put my spirit in you and you shall live and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, says the Lord. Father, we thank you. We thank you, God, for the apostolic order that you designated for the church in Acts chapter 2. We thank you for those who are making the adjustments in order to be covered and protected in this day and time so we may thrive and fulfill your will. But without it, God, we can't advance your kingdom. Your kingdom was advanced with an apostolic mindset. So we thank you for it. We thank you for the conditioning of our minds that fills our hearts with potential. And we do things that we could not have done unless you be with us. Truly, you are with us. In Jesus' name, amen, amen and amen. Go ahead and take your seats in the presence of the Lord. We want to uh, continue to keep the Hatcher family uh, in our prayers uh, as well. Uh, Griffin Hatcher used to be a musician for me years ago. He played several years for me. Uh, yesterday I heard that he passed away at 50 years old. So I really encourage people, you don't know when you're leaving. Make sure that you're in right standing with God. Make sure you're doing things that you should be doing. Make sure you're plugged in to wherever God needs you to be plugged in because we really don't know uh, when that day is coming. But we can be proactive and make sure we're in the right place and we're around the right people. Especially if God doesn't want you to go at this time you may need to be around some people that's got some crazy faith that will believe you back on this side when you slipped on the other side. You understand what I'm saying? So we want to remember to pray for them as rest as well as the other people that we're praying for. Carl Page lost his brother as well. So we're going to continue to keep them lifted up. And anyone else that's suffering uh, the loss of a family member, uh, we will be working on making sure that we have a class for grieving grieving people. Um, we're working on that. Many people think that they can suffer the death of a lost loved one and just go on through life. That is not the truth. They need counsel. They need someone to help them to process their pain. Um, and sometimes if you don't get that five, ten years down the road, you crash and don't know why. But it's good to get some counsel. So we're going to make sure in 2020 all those things are set up uh, effectively so that you can get what you need in order to be healthy in life. Your spouse don't know why you're flipping out on them. It's because you're still grieving the loss of somebody 10 years ago. Let's talk some based on this scripture. I've done a pretty good bit of research this morning uh, on this particular scripture, so I have a whole lot more. I did not get into point number four and point number five, but I've done a pretty good bit of research, so I'm going to go into that. So I want you to stay with me as I'm going into that. Thank God for all the streamers tonight. But this is something you can write down, and it may be put on the screens as well. It's believed that uh, the uh, withered bones of Israel were symbolic to Ephraim and Judah. It is believed, according to my study, it is believed that the withered bones of Israel were symbolic to Ephraim and Judah. 
based on the scriptures that we're, we were reading, these two particular tribes, one of these guys, Judah is the son of Jacob. It was Jacob and Esau. Then Ephraim was Joseph's son. So it was Joseph and Manasseh that came to Jacob to have hands laid on them. And that's when uh, Jacob crossed his hands. I'll talk a little bit about that. So it's believed that these, the, the two tribes that were impacted the most was Ephraim and Judah. Ephraim represents being fruitful in the land of your of my afflictions, according to Genesis 41 and 52. Let me read that again. Ephraim represents being fruitful in the land of my afflictions, according to Genesis 41 and 52. Let me help you with that. No matter how afflicted you are, you still should be productive. It doesn't matter what I'm going through. I'm going to be productive. Because Ephraim, the nature of Ephraim is to be productive when you're in a time of affliction. So if the nature of Ephraim is in you and you feel like you being afflicted, you should be able through the power of the Holy Spirit. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You should be able to function in your affliction. Uh, if we were to go just a little bit, and that, that's, the, that's why I got to talk to you like this. Because according to uh, the book of Exodus, verse, chapter 1, and verse 12, it supports this theory. The Bible says in the book of Exodus, chapter 1, verse 12, it says, The more they afflicted them, the more they grew and multiplied. So that tells me the spirit of Ephraim was on them. You should not decrease when you're afflicted. You should not decrease in praise because you had a problem today. If decrease is happening, then you, and especially in praise, you are having an identity crisis. Because the greater the affliction, the greater the praise. But if you're having an identity crisis, then you'll decrease in your praise while the affliction is limited to the space that you're in. Let me help you. Can I help you? Your affliction didn't follow you in here. We set this atmosphere so that you wouldn't have to be concerned about your affliction. We told your affliction that we don't have a parking space for you. That's why we set the atmosphere on fire for those of you who don't know what we're doing. It's not that we don't go through things. It's not that things are not distasteful. We just understand if we're part of the tribe of Ephraim, we understand that the more you put pressure on us, the more we go to another dimension. No, we're not crazy. We just know our identity. That's all. You can call us crazy if you want to and you stay depressed. But I'm going to be happy no matter what kind of hell comes my way. I've been doing this for almost 23 years. My church has not seen me depressed. Does that mean I have not had problems? I've had many problems. I had many battles, but it pushed me to another level because I understand that when I'm going through, when I'm afflicted, that's why, that's why the psalmist said, it was good that I was afflicted. So when stuff starts happening that doesn't feel too good, you better watch out. I'm gonna clap my hands, I'm gonna lift my, my voice, I'm gonna break out in a shout of praise. I'm sorry if I mess up your dignified party, but you may not be going through what I'm going through. And if you're not going through what I'm going through, you don't understand why I'm doing what I'm doing. So if the person next to you tried to sit you down, you to look at them, you, you ain't got nothing to do with this praise. You're, and you're not going to stop me. And we ain't the type of church. And I made sure that you have to sit down with some idiot because they don't know how to give God glory when they're going through hell. So Ephraim represents being fruitful in the land 
of my affliction, according to Genesis 41 and verse 52. So while I'm in a bad place, I'm good. While I'm in a bad place, I'm good. Look at your neighbor, tell him, when I'm in a bad place, I'm good. I don't know what kind of weak Christianity y'all been taught, but I've been taught that type of Christianity to take a licking and keep on ticking. That's what I, because if you can't tick when you take a lick, then you might not be authentic. I be careful about running with people that give up when they go through something. I go up when I go through something. <laughs> you ain't seen me praise yet. You ain't seen me worship yet. I keep telling them you ain't heard me preach yet. You will hear me preach when fire becomes hot enough that I'll jump out the fire and tell the devil you can't burn me and you can't leave any signs on me that I've been through what I've been through. You see, see, somebody has to teach you this. You, you got to break down those names. Because every name, especially of Jacob's sons, has characteristics that you're supposed to see in the body of Christ. Israel was the whole. Inside of Israel, there were other tribes, 12 tribes. You should exemplify their characteristics as a born-again believer. Can we get to Judah? Some of y'all know what that means, but before we get to Judah, let me give one more example of, of Ephraim. Ephraim also represents uh, the last becoming first, according to Genesis 48, verse 14 through 19. Ephraim also represents the last becoming first, according to Genesis 48, 14 through 19. So, Ephraim and Manassas were carried by their father Joseph to Jacob and when he brought them to Jacob, Jacob took his right hand and put it on Ephraim's head. Joseph got upset about it and tried to change his hand. He said, not so. What I'm doing is I'm making the last first. He said, what I have, I shouldn't be walking in, but I'm walking in it because God done a switcheroo. See, what, what, what y'all don't understand, that's why I'm breaking down teaching you just a little bit. There's a switcheroo going on. And the ones who thought they were first are being shifted back to the last. And those who thought they were last are being shifted around to the front. So, so when, when Ephraim and Judah were in trouble, things stopped shifting. See, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm talking not just to refresh family church. I'm talking to the body of Christ right now. I'm talking to the body of Christ because something's shifting. See, you thought the government was first. No, the church is first. You thought arts and entertainment was first. No, the church is first. There's a switcheroo going on right, right now. What right now? <laughs> I feel something right there. There, there. There's some stuff shifting around. You better, you better make sure. You better stop looking at me crazy. I'm looking at you crazy because I'm, I'm your ride to your shift. That's why you don't need to be lazy. That's why you don't need to be licking your wounds right now. That's why you don't be, need to be rehearsing your pain. That's why you don't need to always be talking about what you're going through. Talk about what you came over. You need to remind yourself of how, God, how good God has been to you. I can look at my testimony from yesterday and tell that God's about to do something for me today. So Ephraim also represents the last becoming first, according to Genesis 48, verse 14 through verse 19. You, you have to be careful because 
There are people in the church that think they know God's order better than God. Well, when God gets ready to shift things, ain't nothing you can do to stop it. Ain't nothing you can do. You, 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 you all that in the back. Ain't, when God gets ready to shift something, there's nothing you can do to stop it. When those boys walked up there, Jacob was authority. He was apostolic authority imparting to sons. And he shifted that thing. You'll be amazed at people who will last that are now being made great. I said you'd be amazed. You, look, let, let me give you just a simple example. You remember when you were in school and the girls were chasing the, the, the quarterback? Now the quarterback's broke. And it's 20 years later. Who they chasing now? Somebody say it's a shift. <laughs> Some of these guys, they ain't even look at you in high school. Now, now that you got it going on, it's a, it's a shift. It's a shift. Everything's changing. Don't nobody want no broke down, uh-huh. All you could do was carry a ball. Can you handle a business? I'm just, just giving you some examples. It's a shift. It, it doesn't matter. And all them super, I got it under control, I got it dominated, you about to be last. Because you don't understand the shift. And you're putting emphasis on the wrong thing. And you think, I'm going to come into compliance. Absolutely not. Because I was last. Past tense, I was last. Hear me again, past tense, I was last. I, I, got a, I got a call today before I get to Judah. I got a call today, Herb. It's a strange call. I, I missed it because I was leaving home and normally I don't get good receptions from my garage until I get about a block away. So I missed the call and I called back when I got a block away. And I'm wondering what they're calling about. So, I, you know, I call back. And uh, when I'm on the phone with them, they said, we, we want you to come. I can't give you all the details yet. We want you to come speak over some influential people in the city. This year, we want you. We feel like you can bring comfort to some of these figures that are influencing the city. We believe that you will be able to speak into some of the influential people in the city. So we want you, uh, does your schedule permit? It does now. So, so, so you look at your neighbor, tell them switch. So you, you, you got to understand some stuff happening. Y'all y'all just listening to me preach and y'all not going back and rehearsing anything. You got to take this word and go back to streaming and go over it and over it and over it again. See, some of y'all living out the same stuff you've been living out. Some of y'all got customs that work against the word of God and the truth of God's word. You're going to have to throw those customs away because what God is doing in this season just don't make no sense. You got to throw your routine away. Go home a different route tonight because some of y'all so accustomed to going the same route that you're going to miss your blessing if you keep driving that same route. I made up my mind that I'm not going that same route. If God wants to do something with me at this point in time in my life, I'm going to get everything out of the way. See, I got to grow in this season. I can't be mentoring nobody. I got to grow myself. See, you got to know when there's a season to mentor and when there's a season to grow yourself. And the problem with most people in church, they don't know how to eat and they trying to feed. So if you don't like the choices I'm making, I'm making choices so I can grow.
because I feed a lot, but now I got to be fed. I mentor a lot, now I got to be mentored. So I'm going to have to call somebody before I go and speak in that meeting. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's, let's talk about Judah. You're going to believe in what I teach you in a minute. When you start believing in what I teach, you'll stop chasing things and let them chase you. You get off focus chasing things. I will keep my focus. The closer I get to God, the more they're coming after me. I said the closer I get to God. See, you spiritualize it. No, the closer you get to God, the more discipline and order comes in your life. The more structure comes into your life. The more apostolic order comes into your life. The closer you get to God, you don't do crazy stuff. You don't work against authority. You don't sit there and let your mind run rapid about crazy things that don't exist. I was telling my wife this this when we were getting ready to head to church. I was telling her, I said, my mind, my mind didn't do like that when it came to my leader. This funny stuff that people's minds do. I said, my mind didn't do that. My mind didn't, didn't try to reason and uh, rationalize and figure stuff. No, God said that with my leader. That's the only meeting we had to have. See, you make it too complicated. You make it too complicated. God says that you're your leader, so you got to trust God to keep following. So God told me that was my leader. I followed unto death. Let, let, me, let me help you. All my responsibilities were over after death. What I do now is based on what's drawn to the double portion on my life. If stuff tries to follow me, I ain't going to run it away. Because I'm in a season where everything's after me now. See, that, that, that's too big for some of y'all. That's too big. You go ahead and make a decision you don't want to follow and watch the things that's supposed to follow. Because if you were really with me, you couldn't have separated from me. Okay. okay. All right. All right. All right. Judah, 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 Judah. Judah. Now, these are, you know, we got to talk about Ephraim. And we got to talk about Judah because it represents those dry bones. These are some of the ones that were dry, hopeless, and cut off. So if it's dry, guess what? You stay last. If, if, if Ephraim don't get encouraged, you're going to always be last. But Ephraim getting encouraged tonight. Listen, Judah. Judah represents praising the Lord according to Genesis 29 and verse 35. Judah represents praising the Lord according to Genesis 29 and verse 35. When we say Judah, automatically, the body of Christ should think praise. Automatically. It doesn't matter if you got one leg, two legs, no leg. Automatically, when you say Judah, the church, God's people should think praise. If you don't think praise when we say Judah, you're having an identity crisis. It, not, it doesn't say if you feel like it. It doesn't fit, say if you had a good day. It doesn't say if you got the miracle you wanted today. It doesn't say if everything you ask God for has been answered. When you mention Judah, everything ought to break out in a praise. So let me give you some information about your neighbor. If they don't think praise when we say Judah, it's because they're cut off and they're without hope and they're dry. So if you don't praise, like God says praise when we mention Judah, 
It's because you have been cut off. You are in hopelessness. Because people who have hope, they get refreshed. So I was struggling till I walked up and I saw the name on the building. Refreshing always takes place when Judah shows up. You can't carry yesterday's burden when you're in a Judah. I was depressed until somebody mentioned Judah. So y'all sit down. So Ezekiel is told to prophesy to God's people because Ephraim, the one that makes us first when we were last, has been cut off. He's prophesying and speaking the future to the people because when they mentioned Judah, the people no longer praised, gave God glory. Have you ever seen people that used to give God glory but don't give God any glory now? Let me tell you what happened. They had a bad situation. And that bad situation canceled their Judah praise. Praise is not conditional. You don't praise when you feel like it. You praise because he asked for it. Praise has to do with having breath in your body. If you have breath in your body, you ought to give him the praise that he deserves. Not that you got millions of dollars in the bank baby when you're negative a thousand dollars you ought to still give god the praise listen 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 judah is the help against the enemy according to Deuteronomy 33 and 7. Judah is the help against the enemy according to Deuteronomy 33 and verse 7. When you don't praise, you don't have help. See, you think it's what loose uneducated people do now when you get educated and you you're on a high level and you got an enemy you don't know how to overcome what you do is you shift in judah mode and you begin to praise god and then your enemies are now self-slaughtered i don't know how many enemies are still in your life because you refuse to praise According to Deuteronomy 33 and verse 7, Judah helps against the enemy. Now, the only reason you don't have an enemy is because you're not doing anything. I'm going to take it deeper. The reason you don't have an enemy, you don't have the potential to do anything. Because enemies come when they sense you have potential. Not when you accomplish something great. They come when they sense you could be. You want to be. You have a dream. What, what a day to talk about a dream. They, they didn't get upset with him because of what he done. Because he done more through his death than he did through his life. When he started talking about his dream, he upset some people. I see the problem with you. you if you're going to talk about what you're going to do, you better have a Judah praise with you. See, a lot of y'all want to share your plan. If you share your plan for success, you better have Judah with you because if you share your plan, you're going to create some enemies. See, I, I have to take my praise higher because I don't know who's watching me. I have to take my praise higher. That's why, you know, I push 
do it do an intercession because I got I got to take my praise higher because uh, either either my praise gonna whip them or I'm gonna whip them I need to keep my hands clean you understand so I'm gonna let my praise do the fighting see reason have y'all cussing folks out because you ain't praising high enough you, you get your praise right you ain't gotta say yeah you got to get your praise right. You got to get your glory to God right. You got to get your hallelujah right. Because when you get that right, you ain't got to worry about what they doing. What they doing is sabotaging themselves. Well, they, they just too loud around here. No, we too victorious around here. You, you can say whatever you want to say. We ain't borrowing nothing from you. Listen, listen. And I'm going to get to four and five. And I'm done. The bones being dry means a vital force of the nation was gone. The bones being dry means a vital force of the nation was gone. When the bones, when it mentioned the bones being dry, it meant that a vital force of the nation was gone. I always pay attention to things that are very important that makes us thrive. And I never will uh, be satisfied when certain things are, are absent. I measure the atmosphere. Because if I can't sense Judah, we losing. I got to be able to sense Judah in the atmosphere. I got to be able to look out over the audience and through streaming and see some praiseworthy people. I got to be able to look out there and see Ephraim. That means I don't care if you just got hired on the job. You about to be the manager. You, you, you see, you, you don't understand. You're the only one putting restrictions on you because you don't know who you really are, do you? Well, it takes somebody like me to come and tell you you're functioning so low beneath the privileges that the kingdom of God has for you. So, so the bones being dry means a vital force of nation was gone. Let me tell y'all what's happening to y'all. Y'all letting the world indoctrinate you. I may have came in in some baggy pants. Now I got on some slacks and a button up and a tie. But I'm going to praise the same way I did with those baggy pants that I did you're not going to stop my praise because you don't know what works for me. So I don't care how many tailor-made suits I wear. I'm still going to give God the praise because what I remember a day that I gave him praise and I didn't have no suit. And see, your problem is when you come to church, you think you had a ball. You ain't had no ball, baby. You're in the presence of God. So these, these vital forces had died. Listen, listen to me, y'all. Listen, ain't no such thing as a quiet African-American church. If it's quiet, it's just an institution. Y'all settle, y'all, y'all settle, y'all settle down. No, you trying to put me back in bondage. And I don't mean to be disrespectful, but hell no. I done my time. I'm out now. You ain't putting me back where I came from. I know what depression feels like. I know what low self-esteem feels like. I know what it is to reject myself. But I came to tell you, through pray, I love myself. 
I don't know how many people I'm talking to, you had to learn how to love yourself. You were looking down on yourself, but when you start praising God, you start to realize greater as he that lives in you than he that lives within the world. And I'm about to start hating on myself. I'm hating on God. self-worth, worth, poor self-worth in the kingdom is opposing God. What am I? Who am I? If my self-worth is poor, then I just brought God down to my elementary level. But if I have confidence in the God that's on the inside of me, yeah, I know the Bible said have no confidence in the flesh, but I ain't in the flesh right now. I'm in the spirit right now. And greater is he that lives on the inside of me than he that lives in the world. See, you, you have to be careful. You have to be careful. You start thinking that you're not worth living. It's not just that the bones were dry. The problem was they had lost desire to live. Life had gone out of them. It wasn't that they were physically bones. They no longer had a desire for to, to fulfill God's will for their life. They just came to church and sat there. They say like a knot on the law, not expecting anything to happen. It's not that you come to church. You got to have expectation when you come to the house of God. In fact, let's take it a little further. When you wake up in the morning, you ought to have expectation. They, they no longer had expectations so they they couldn't be refreshed every day was a boring dried up callous day because they couldn't be refreshed and i know every time you see me i feel you it seems like i have been refreshed it's because i heard the word of the lord and he spoke to me and i begin to respond when you begin to respond every single day is a day of refreshing it's not a name on a building it's the activity of your life. Stab your neighbor, tell him I am refreshed. I don't care how hard I work today, I'm refreshed. I don't care how many demons I had came, came in contact with today, I am refreshed. I don't care who talked about me today, I am refreshed. I don't care who rejected me today, I am refreshed. I don't care who stole from me today, I am refreshed. I don't care who turned on me, I am refreshed. My bones are not dry. I am going to live life and I'm going to live it to the fullest because he came according to John 10, 10 and he gave me life and that more abundant that means I live a sore way life. I'm not going to stay in depression. I don't care what happens. I shall live life. Leave if you want to. I'm going to keep on living. People do funny things concerning you because they think you're going to die. They play with you because they think you're going to die. But when they say they don't want to have nothing else to do with you, break out in a praise. When they tell you they're going to walk out on you, break out in a praise. Break out in a pray. When they tell you you don't measure up, break out in a pray. success baby while I'm preaching 
it. You're stepping over into your successful day. I don't care what's been going on. I don't care what happened. No, it don't matter. You are alive. you. Let me tell you why they underestimated you. They thought you'd never respond to a prophetic word. They, ne they thought you would, you were so far down, you would never believe that the sun was coming up again. They thought you were so far gone that you wouldn't believe that you could ever come back. But I came to announce to you tonight before I get to my next point that you on your comeback right now. Slap somebody high five time. I'm coming back now. go and I've been as low as I can go and now you gonna think if I can bat my eyes I can't come all the way back if I can bat my eyes I'm gonna wiggle my fingers if I can wiggle my finger I'm gonna raise my arm if I can raise my arm I'm gonna start lifting up my understand that people have been talking about you and saying you will never recover. They've been talking about you saying you will never recover. But Oscar Goldman said that we're going to make him stronger and we're going to make him faster and we're going to make him better. I came to tell the church, hear me. This is the message that stayed with me that my father preached. You got to understand who Oscar Goldman was. He built a $600 man that had crashed. Everybody that crashed, get ready. God's about to put you back together again. Better, 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 better. I got eight minutes. They thought that no one would take interest in you because you were so dried up and seemed so hopeless. They thought nobody would take interest with in you. But God never forgotten you. And God found a man with a prophetic edge on his life that'll speak to dry bones and say, you shall live and not die. You're going to be raised up as one of the greatest nations that this world has ever seen. And if you believe what I'm saying right now, I don't care how, how, how dry it's been, clap your hands and celebrate your resurrection. You, before I get to point four and five, I'm going to finish at 830. I promise you, I'm going to finish at 830. When people come in here and they're criticizing what I'm doing, what I'm trying to do, because some of y'all got so used to being dry and without breath. So sometimes I had to come in here and I had to push you. It's like standing over you. Just... <laughs> so 
so when you don't understand me, what I'm doing is CPR on the people that still got a future while they thought the past killed them. Listen, number four, nothing is going to keep God's people buried. Nothing is going to keep God's people buried. Nothing is going to keep God's people buried. I'm going to say it again. Nothing is going to keep God's people buried. Debt can't keep God's people buried. Sickness can't keep God's people buried. Scandals can't keep God's people buried. Whatever the enemy has tried to use against you, it can't keep God's people buried. Because when you start praising in the tomb, what is that noise coming out of the tomb? What is that noise coming out of the tomb? What is that noise coming out of the tomb? Listen, listen, you may have given up on yourself. But men like me to hear from God don't have the privilege of giving up on you. And if you know, any time last year you gave up, but I just kept on. That means I kept preaching when you didn't want to breathe anymore, when you didn't want to exist anymore. I. as well live number five in this season the church will be a living standing exceedingly great army no wonder they wanted you dead Not only did you come to life, not only did you stand up, you realized you were an army. The only time you don't realize who you are is when you're still laying down and not alive. But when you come to life, you'll stand up. And when you stand up, you don't realize you ain't no cheap stuff. They didn't understand that we weren't just chatting or chanting. When we say we didn't come to take sides, we really intend on taking over. We really intend on influencing everything now that that's about 50 people that's about that's about 50 people that believe that you wait until i get through speaking to that group you 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 wait you wait until i get done speaking to that group whoever you have influence with that means that you're taking over. See, you want to sit in that chair. No, I want their ear. Let me tell y'all what's about to happen. Somebody's about to listen to us that hasn't listened to the church in over a hundred years. I, I need y'all, I need y'all in this last minute, I need y'all to put a praise on that.
Nashville to a church. And the church, when you pulled up, you could tell the church was influencing most of Asheville. So some of the most prominent individuals were in the meeting that I was speaking in. And I ran into one that invited me. He said, uh, they're still talking about you almost two weeks later. The preacher is preaching about me when he gets in the pulpit. I want to tell y'all something. You better wake up, baby, because it's your time for your thing from your God. Now shout about it.